And you can argue the winter of 2023-2024 has yet to start. Great Lakes ice coverage to date is at record lows, and a ski resort in Montana had to close in February for the season. That is crazy. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We are going to talk about what is going on, why this winter has been so crazy and crazy bad if you are a snow and cold lover. Then we are going to talk about the next storm to sweep across the country. We still have those atmospheric rivers slamming California. And then we have another system heading to the upper Midwest and Canada and into the Northeast. That is going to bring some snow for a lucky few. It's literally a lucky few. We're going to break that down coming up as well. And then we're going to look at the reason why the winter has been so warm and snow free for especially the upper Midwest and Northeast and continuing to see if this is going to be the case as we round out February and get into March. Before we get into all of this, if you want to stay updated on the rest of the winter, or lack thereof, hit subscribe. We are going to be heading into storm season with severe weather and, of course, hurricane seasons. We have updates on all of that. Hit that subscribe button. If you happen to find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It's a really small ask, but it really does help us out a lot. Also, I would love to know where you're tuning in from and if you got in the snow or not got in the snow this season. All right. We're going to start off with the current snow cover as of February 20th, and it is very lame out there upper uh, higher elevations of the sierra nevadas we're getting rocked those uh, atmospheric rivers are helping our snow back out so the ski resorts in the sierras are doing awesome cascades looking good we have some snow in the rockies again it's still below normal look at this though this is the big deal here it's going to be in eastern montana into eastern wyoming eastern colorado into the dakotas nebraska minnesota the great lakes and parts of the northeast Barely any snow on the ground. I want to show you a select few cities before we get into uh, some of the weather to come. And just look at how below normal we are. This is the snow to date now. Detroit, Michigan. We should be at 20 or we have 22.6 inches of snow to date. Our average to date though is 33.6 this one is crazy. Uh, Minnesota, we are in a big time snow drought. I mean, I know I lived there for many years and Minnesota, we need the snow. We love the snow and cold this time of the year. And there just hasn't been any 14.2 inches at, at the Twin Cities, in the Twin Cities at the airport. 36.2 is where we should be this time of the year. New York City, I know we've had a pretty decent winter. I get it. It's not been big by any means, but at least we got some snow. We ended our snow drought. This is the Central Park site, 7.5 inches. Average to date is 21 and a half, so still way below normal. Chicago, 20 inches. We should be closer to 30. Bismarck, North Dakota, 16.2 inches to date. 34 and a half inches just about. That's where we should be. Again, we're going to talk a little bit more on why we've not seen so much snow or barely any snow in those areas. After we talk about the forecast here, where we have seen the active weather continue, it's in the west. Atmospheric river continues to slam. This is Tuesday, February 20th, 2 o'clock. We still see the very heavy rain coming into Southern California on the, western, on the west coast of the United States. We also are going to be watching another system developing here towards the end of the week. So this is Thursday. Look, though, it's all green. We have no snow coming with this, at least into parts of the Mississippi River Valley, into the interior mid-Atlantic area, into parts of the Midwest, until we get it into Friday into Saturday and into interior New England. Maine, we're going to get some snow, I think. Uh, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and then Southeast Canada. Now, how much? I think this could be a really nice dumping, if you will, of snow. Again, it's nothing too, too crazy. I don't think we're measuring this in a lot of feet, but I think we could be pushing a foot of snow in especially uh, the northern tier of Maine and then really into parts of southern Canada, Montreal, maybe up to an inch, uh, Newport, we're going to get uh, potentially one to three inches of snow out of here. Now, this is uh, from Friday into the weekend. So there's going to be wiggle room with how much snow we get. But this is a general kind of sense here on what is coming. Uh, places like New Brunswick, we could pick up four to eight inches of snow. Um, we're going to miss out on this one. We got a lot of snow in uh, parts of Nova Scotia and into Newfoundland uh, over the past week or so. We're going to miss out largely on this one. But that's where winter is going to be in the short term over the next week ahead. We'll keep you updated 
on this storm, but there's the general area anyway. And again, those numbers are going to fluctuate, but the general area of where winter is still going to be hanging on. And literally, I mean hanging on. Look at this. Groundhog was right when he talked about the early spring. Check this out. Huge blowtorch. Again, in areas that we really, really would love to see some snow, and that's going to be in the upper Midwest and northern plains. Again, I know so many people rely on the snow whether it's snow removal whether it's recreation in the upper midwest in the northern plains in the great lakes and we just don't have it and unfortunately we're not going to get much more at least over the next couple of weeks you see this here these are the temperature departures relative to normal and we're maxing out the scale that purple's coming back we're talking temperatures 25 to 35 degrees above normal i had people message me on my facebook page it's jonathan kegis new six by the way from minnesota telling me that They've never seen so many 60 degree plus days in the state of Minnesota. We'll talk about why, at least partially anyway, in a little bit. Where we're cooler relative to normal is going to be where we saw the snow and then into Florida where we still have that very active subtropical jet stream brought on by El Nino that is keeping things cloudy. So that's one of the reasons why we're cooler than normal in Florida in parts of the southeast corner of the U.S. Here we go getting into Saturday, February 24th. There is the chill, kind of that backdoor front coming in, allowing some of that colder, colder air to spill in into the northeast. And it was cold this morning the morning of the 20th but again there we go uh and look at all the warmth build again really in the western two-thirds of the country as we go forward here taking you out as we roll into the last few days of february hard to believe but look at this again i mean this is nuts we'll likely see records fall maybe from toledo into st louis Kansas City, Oklahoma City, Rapid City, Bismarck, Minot, Minneapolis, Rochester, Minnesota, getting into Sioux Falls, uh, Sioux City, Des Moines, that pink purple color showing up on your screen. I mean, again, we are maxing out this scale. That's 30 plus degrees above normal. Uh, again, that's relative to normal. So that's not what the temperature is going to be. It's relative to normal in the nation's midsection. We do have another weather system. Uh, it looks like towards the end of the month into early March that will help to keep us on the cooler side. Looks like a dip in the jet stream out here. But when we see that dip right here, we build that ridge right here. The point I'm trying to make is, and those weather nerds like myself know that in an el nino year in march which we are in and which we are headed into of course march right around the corner we still can get really big snowstorms there's just not a lot of arctic air to be had again the number one ingredient for snow is cold air and when you don't have the cold air no matter how active the weather pattern is we're just not going to get it so again, the El Nino brought on by the trade winds kind of pushing everything uh, back. That's where you're talking about a La Nina. But then when we see those trade winds weaken a little bit like this year, we see that warmer air slosh back. Now again, that's what's happening. At least that's how we categorize El Nino. This is how it impacts you. And again, this is one of the main reasons. Again, to me, I mean, I mean it, is, it is crazy that a ski resort in Montana has closed for the season because of the lowest amount of moisture that they have seen on record in their 55 years that is significant and again el nino is playing a huge role in that and it is a very very strong el nino so we have the impacts again when you have the strong el nino there's a higher probability anyway of these typical impacts happening so you see it right there drier in that part of the world in that part of the united states it certainly has been wetter again we're continuing to get slammed by these atmospheric rivers very strong pacific jet has kept things cloudy it has been the cloudiest winter uh on record in florida 84 years the record spans and it has been super wet just came through a very wet weekend finally got the daytona 500 in great race um and that's where we have the big time warmth in an el nino year our colder winters in the northern plains in the upper midwest our big time big ticket winters in this part of the country are in la nina winters which we are look it looks like we're heading back into during hurricane season and i do have a video on that as well you can take a look at that in the card and you can stick around to the end of the video as well i'm going to have more information on the great lakes and some of the flooding going on in california but again um it's crazy stuff here. So we'll talk about that. You can watch that video about La Nina, how that could relate to the hurricane season coming up. And it's not good. Spoiler alert. 
But in the upper Midwest and Northern Plains, if that holds the winter, we could turn things around next winter. But again, in an overall warming climate, this is certainly helping. The El Nino is kind of putting that on steroids here and uh, really robbed us of winter. All righty, guys, if you found this content helpful, I would love it if you hit that thumbs up button. Again, we'd love to know where you're tuning in from across the country or across North America or the world. We've had a lot of people internationally tuning in. So welcome to the channel. We break down all things weather here. Again, please hit that thumbs up button if you want to stay updated on the weather, no matter what it is and where you are. Hit that subscribe button. We got you covered. And again, thanks for checking us out. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.